Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. We're continuing on on the LeBlanc lathe restoration today, and uh, we're going to concentrate uh, in this episode on trying to get uh, the cross slide and the compound all put back on here. Uh, so, without further ado, let's get you zoomed in here and let's get to work. So we're going to start uh, by putting the dial back on here, but before I do, there's a little uh, oil uh, oiler here, a little oil cup that screws in, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of put that in. It was kind of in there at an angle about like that, and we come in here with an oil can and uh, put some oil down in here, and I think with that, it's, it's just, I don't think you can get it in there with the rest of this on, so we'll go ahead and put that on first. Next to come in here is the actual dial, and we've got this all cleaned up, polished up, um, and it's just going to come in here. Now, the way this goes, there's three holes that this could go into, and theoretically you could put it on here anyway, uh, but the direction you want to put it, there's a line right here at the top that you're dialing into, and you want that line to be on the top. So that's your reference, and uh, there's just three little bolts here that tap into the casting and we'll get those started and tightened up. But we got it. Good deal. And that feels pretty smooth. Good. All right, I think we're ready to start putting all this back together. And just to kind of show you, we got this uh, base and I've already kind of got it pre-assembled. I got my bolts, that my nuts in here that will, that the compound will attach to already installed. They have to come in from the bottom, so you really need to go ahead and have them in there. In fact, um, I think I am gonna just squirt some oil down in there. Get that uh, lubed up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and uh, lube this up. This is uh, actual whey oil, which is the oil that you want to put on here. Believe in oil, guys. So, with that, we'll just go ahead and kind of Put that on there and I'm going to just slide it back and forth a time or two to kind of seat the oil in it. We'll wipe up the excess in a little bit. So here's the trick. Um, the nut, the, the, this is the, the screw that goes through here, but there's a nut that will come up through this hole right here and it's going to seat right down in here, but it's going to be aggravating. It's got to come in from the bottom. Uh, come up through this hole. There's a couple of set screws that kind of hold it in place, um, and it's you know I, it's just going to be aggravating. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and there's kind of a hole down in the bottom of the casting. I can reach up from the bottom. The problem is is that I just can't reach up in there very far. I'm going to take the screw into the hole that enters in the back, and I'm kind of looking down through here, and I'm just going to. Try to get that screw going through the nut. Okay, and it's there. Let me put a little oil in here. I'm gonna use a lightweight oil in here just to lube it in so it slides up in there a little bit better. Oh, that wasn't too bad. All right, so that is all the way in. I need to get my set screws now and uh, tighten those in place. Zoom me in here a little bit where you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, I'm going to slide that screw in and start threading the, um, the bolt through here or the, the screw through. I'm gonna take a little hammer handle and come in from the bottom down here and kind of push up on this nut and uh, try to get it up in there all the way like such. And now there's two little set screws and these kind of lock it in place. So 
so hopefully I can get them to start back in there. I'll tell you what, I'm going to start over here. Okay. Let me see if I can get the other one started now. Yeah, that wasn't near as bad as I uh, thought it was going to be. This has been the part I've been dreading. Uh, just not knowing how getting all this to line back up was going to go. But I think that's it. Very good. Finish uh, kind of screwing this in. All right, so now it's kind of up to the front. I'm gonna spin this around and try to get, there's a keyway that, that that lines up on. Actually, before I do that though, I'm gonna squirt a little bit of oil on that. Again, better take advantage of it while this thing's apart. There it goes. All right, so. That is all the way in. That is uh, basically where we want it. So now um, we need to put our gib in and get that adjusted and set. So this uh, cross slide slides on a dovetail ways, um, but as this machine wears over time, it, you need to have an adjustment in it to be able to tighten it up. And that's what this gib does. So if you look, you've got that angle, but this is tapered from one end to the other. So by tightening it in, moving it in or out, you can tighten and loosen that, that, uh, that joint or that fit in there. So this is going to just slide in the front like such, and it goes in. Um, there's a screw here on the front that uh, will adjust it. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in there. And there's also a screw in the back so you can basically, if you tighten it, you loosen the back and then you pinch it in place. Uh, so this is gonna take some adjustments to get it where it needs to be. Um, and I really kinda need to uh, get everything assembled before I actually adjust that. But I do wanna go ahead and get the gib in. Uh, I'm just gonna, it's a little bit tight right now. I'm gonna push it back a little bit with this one and um, get it where we can slide it. And like I said, we'll adjust that once we kind of get it all back together. But it is, it's moving right now. Still a little bit tight. Tighter than I like. All right, we're just gonna leave it like that for right now. So next is the compound, and this is uh, the where your tool post mounts, and it's uh, mounted on a base that rotates on the cross slide, so you got your different angles on here. And it's similar, uh, to the cross slide and that, you know, it's got a screw in here that moves us back and forth. We got uh, the same type of ways. We got our gib in here um, that will go in like, oh. Gotta remember how it goes in here. Oh, I've got it in backwards. Here we go. The gib goes in like that. There we go. And as you can see, it's got a taper down this side. So as you move this in and out, it gets wider and narrower in here. So again, that's your adjustment. Of course, it's a much smaller range. And again, there's a, two screws, one on each end, that you, that you move this back and forth to get it set where it slides just right. So um, this will go in in a minute. Right now, what I'm gonna do is again, go ahead and uh, 
lube this up real good. Um, next thing is there's the nut um, that the screw will go into. Uh, the nut will go in this hole right here, like such. And uh, this one, because this is tapered, you can get this in a position where it will drop down on here. So there we go. So it is down on there now. And I'm going to go ahead and insert the gib down here on this end. And I think I'll go ahead and uh, get my screws in there. There's just one on each end that adjusts this uh, gib. So as you can see right here, maybe you can see that. That one will screw in on this end. It catches on that gib and gives it some adjustment and similar on the other end up underneath the bottom here there's a hole here for the give adjustment screw to go into I want to turn this over I think to adjust this What you want to do is get it to where there's no slide to side play in it. But it slides freely. And that actually is pretty darn good right there. So uh, I'm going to leave that like it is. So next thing we're going to do is come in with our screw and I'm going to go ahead and uh, Lube this up real good. Also put some right there. I gotta figure out which way this goes in. Okay, so there's the zero that it reads on. So that's gonna go down. And uh, the way this is held in place is there's two tapered pins, one here and here. And you see there's, there's little slots in here and that was drilled out. So um, we're just going to go ahead and tell you what, I'm going to have to go over here to the edge of the table a little bit where I can, uh, y'all still see that? Let me move the camera. All right, so I'm going to start screwing this in. All right, so the screw's in place now. There's a nut here that's going to hold that in place. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that up. Crescent wrench on that. When I did it earlier, didn't have a wrench that big out here at the shop. Bring that on in a little bit more. And all right, I, I'm actually got this where I can look down in there and see those holes uh, where those taper pins go in. Okay, there we go. 
it was just all the way to the other end. Didn't have any play in it. That is moving really nice. I don't really feel any side to side play in it. Again, I can adjust these gibs later. So um, I think this is ready to go back on to the uh, cross slide. And basically this is just gonna fit down over that hole. Those two uh, bolts that are sticking up are gonna come up through these holes and there'll be a nut on the other side that fits up in these little slots. And uh, that'll be used to tighten it in place. So let's go install this. And I think we're ready to install this uh, on here. So I'm gonna wipe this down really good. Uh, I wanna make sure I don't have any dust or dirt in between these. Uh, get these positioned approximately apart from one another. And again, um, just oil everything down really good. Gotta get these uh, bolt holes to line up. There's one. There's the other. Okay, it's down. And there we go. Um, now I've got these little nuts and probably have to lift it back up. Get those right over the holes and uh, get them started. One on each side. All right, we got that on there now. I'm just going to go ahead and tighten it down. Very good. So up next, like we said, we're going to start working on the taper attachment. And um, I had previously, and I did this off camera, and I kind of regret after I did it, uh, I started taking it apart to clean it up. I thought, oh, this is pretty simple. I got into it and I was like, well, this probably would have been, people would have enjoyed seeing it, but sorry, I uh, didn't get that. But you are going to kind of get to see the reverse of it. So as we put it back together, I've got all the parts apart. We got everything cleaned up, got all the parts painted that need to be painted. And uh, it's, it's ready to go back together. So let's put it back together and you can see how all this goes. So we're going to start. This is kind of the, the main casting here that everything kind of pivots on literally. Um, the taper attachment, of course, is used for cutting a taper, and you can adjust a put a, put an angle on here with this little uh, cross rod right here that pivots in that center. And whatever taper you have here is, you can set your machine up so that it it actually cuts instead of cutting parallel with the waves, it's going to cut parallel to this taper. And um, anyway, we got to get it all put back together. So that it goes. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, again, this this piece pivots here. Uh, there's a little uh, rack and pinion down here that you use to adjust it. The rack or the pinion, of course, is here. The rack is at an angle, and here's the rack itself. Um, and um, we're going to basically put that back on. There's a, a pin here, and then two screws that hold it in place. So uh, let me. Tap that down. I'll just use a little piece of brass here. Kind of protect it. Those look pretty good. Let me find my screws. Here we go. So that screw goes in there. And that screw goes in there. Okay, that's good. Uh, go ahead and pull this up a little bit right here. I'm going to swing it off to the side, and now you see I can adjust that with the little lever here. 
So once you get this set, you bolt it down and there's two bolts, there's little T-slots in here. So I'm gonna slide that out. Here's my uh, T-slot bolt. Uh, there's one on both sides. Let me get the other one. Okay, so now get these um, lined up here where they go into those T slots. That one's going in. Okay. All right, so now. Those are in there and we'll go ahead and uh, put the washers on and the nuts. And I'm just gonna kind of snug these right now. So you adjust that wherever you want it. I'm gonna get it kind of parallel and um, I'm just finger tightening, putting in finger tight right now. I can still actually move that, but that's, together like we want it so all right let me figure out what we need to do next all right so next we need to do is install the whole slide here into this little carriage this this part mounts to the back of the uh, the uh, uh, cross slide or the saddle and um, it rides with it and then this whole piece here kind of slides in here. So before I do that though, I want to lube it up. Let me uh, put a little oil on it and we'll slide that together like such. And uh, just like on the other parts, there is a gib that goes in here that we tighten things up with. And that's the wedge shaped gib, goes in just like such. Uh, let me make sure we got that moved up real good. Adjust that in and out to get it where it's just right. Let me find my adjustment screws. I believe this one goes on this end. And then there's this one back here. And you basically tighten and, and loosen both of these simultaneously and lock that gib in place wherever you want it and uh, let's see well all right two problems number one I had the wrong screw it was too small uh, that's the reason it wasn't starting and second uh, this one actually goes on the back I was trying to put it into the wrong side, so let me uh, get that one screwed in over here, and then this one screws in on this side, and we'll get it semi-adjusted. All right, let's see what we got. So, whoops, that's just a little bit tight for my liking, so I'm gonna back off of it just a little bit. We'll Tighten up that one, that'll loosen it up. And that's not bad. I mean, it's, it's tight, but it's, it's moving and it's fairly easy to move. So I'm gonna leave it there. We can always fine tune adjust that later on. Well guys, I had some audio problems here. Uh, batteries ran dead in my microphone, so I'm having to do a little voiceover, but as you can tell, we uh, kind of had to back up and punt a little bit. I realized that um, once we got this together that this was not going together like I needed to. If you look, there's a little, uh, that piece that fits on top, and you got this little piece here I just picked up. The 
that has the cross uh, arm on it. It's got to fit into this little hole uh, back on the back, and there was just no way to put it together uh, the way it was, and uh, I had to take it back apart and mess around with it to figure out how to properly put this together. So what we got to do is is take this little upper bracket and actually put it together first. I need to squirt a little oil in there. Uh, lube that up again. But uh, put this in here like such. And uh, once that is done, now I can take this whole cross slide piece and slide it in there together. Uh, I removed the, the gib uh, to do this. Uh, I just actually took the, the front side out and uh, uh, left the back side in so it would still be adjusted. Uh, so now all I got to do is just slide that gib right back in there where we took it out at. And I'm going to wipe it off here and make sure it's good and clean. Don't want to get any trash up in there. Slide it back in there. And I can put that screw back into uh, the front side there and tighten it up and because I didn't adjust the one on the back it should go right back to the same adjustment I was at before uh, but that was the trick to put this thing back together and uh, I just didn't think about it ahead of time so we had to take it back apart and uh, and do this so now we got to put a gib up here on this top part and it's just like the ones b below except uh, this one here is, doesn't have a dovetail. It just has square sides, but it does the exact same uh, way, works the same way. So we're going to put this in here, put our screws in, tighten it up, and get it adjusted uh, just exactly like before. And once that's done, uh, you can kind of get an idea of how this uh, taper attachment works. So uh, once this is tightened up and you, you slide the taper attachment back and forth, if you notice that little cross piece there it's moving in and out and that is actually attached to the the cross slide on the lathe you loosen it up and it will move in and out so that instead of having to crank on the handle uh, to move the lathe in and out the the taper here is just going to slide along that and move it perfectly uh, with whatever angle you have that set to we continue assembling this. The next piece to put on is this little uh, block on the end. And but before we do, we want to make sure we got again everything lubed up good. Uh, you know, like oil, we got to make sure this thing's oiled up real good. So we slide that block over the end. And uh, the way this is mounted on here is kind of unique. They actually have two alignment pins, and this is uh, one of them here. It's just kind of a hardened pin, and there's two holes uh, on the either side. Uh, and what we'll do is go ahead and get those put in first uh, and then bolt it down because uh, we want to make sure it's aligned just right. So I'll take my little uh, piece of brass here to keep make sure I'm not damaging those uh, threads or anything and we'll just uh, pop those in. The purpose for the threads is to help pull it out. It, it gets tight in there and you can actually uh, tighten those bolts up and it pulls the, the, uh, the pin out. Uh, but once the pins are in, next we'll just uh, go ahead and put the, the two screws that hold it in place, uh, tighten those up real good and tight, and uh, it should be pretty well put together. Next piece that needs to go on here is this little bracket, and it mounts right here. And this actually goes to a piece that clamps down on the bed of the ways on the machine. And uh, there's just this little pin. Uh, and it is just basically pressed into this hole. I had to punch it out to get it out. Uh, this one just fits on here loose. So I'm gonna, again, just put a little dab of oil on this uh, part here where that's going through there. And I'm just gonna take a hammer here and. That should just punch right in. I use my uh, brass piece here. All right, that works just fine. All right, we're coming in here now with the taper attachment. This whole piece just kind of fits up over here like such. There's a little 
spot right here that's got to fit up into a hole. And I think it's just going to take me getting it lined up just right and bumping it in place. There it goes. Okay. Then there's uh, four bolts that uh, attach this. And similar to the part we had before, we got two alignment pins here. Uh, there's one here and here, and I'm going to just get these uh, four screws started, and then we will, I'm not going to tighten them up, and then we'll put those in, in place, and then tighten it up. All right, I've got everything kind of snugged up on here, and now I want to put my alignment pins in, and I'm just going to use my brass punch here to... Push those in. All right. That looks pretty good. And we'll go ahead and tighten these up and that should more or less be on. So on this taper attachment, when you're running it in a taper mode, basically you want to attach the uh, cross slide here to this piece here so that it moves it uh, with everything. And to accomplish that, you got this little bracket here that kind of slides up in here like such. Uh, there is a um, screw right here that we're going to tighten up that'll actually tighten that on there like such. Um, but I, I believe I'm missing some parts on this. In fact, I know I am. Um, and we're going to have to probably fabricate them. If anybody's got a lathe like this, I'd be really interested in, in seeing exactly how this is set up because when I got the lathe, it was basically just like it is right now. And uh, what I'm missing is two things. Number one, I believe that there's a pin that goes down in this hole here that will engage into the bottom piece down there. So you got one that will tighten into place, another one that I think the weight is really on the pin. Um, I'm just kind of, I looked at my my parts manual, it really doesn't shed any light on it. Uh, and then second, back here, there's a rectangular plate that kind of fits down on top of this that is milled uh, with these, it will slide on either side of this, and you just have a, uh, a nut and a washer that tightens that down, and then you just tighten this down to here, and then that will slide the carriage in and out, which uh, it's not moving right now, but that's fine. Um, Anyway, I think that's what we need to do. Uh, again, if anybody's got a lathe like this that can shoot me some pictures, I would be appreciative just so that I can uh, try to copy these parts when I have to fabricate them down the road. Now for the last little part of the taper attachment is um, the clamp that comes up onto the uh, ways and you basically just clamp this in place. And that's what uh, will uh, cause this piece in here to slide back and forth uh, as the carriage moves. So this part right here will actually stay stationary and then this part slides on it. So, but in order for that to happen, you have to uh, clamp this down back here. And when you're not running in normal mode, you just leave this where it slides back and forth. You just loosen it up. So um, I need to get a wrench and tighten that up. But with that, I think we'll have it pretty well uh, in place. Well guys, I, I got looking around. I thought I remembered this piece and sure enough, I found it over another pile of parts that I had. Um, so again, it's, it's just got some little slots milled on the side where that fits on there where it won't turn. And um, you just uh, tighten this thing on here when you were wanting to run in um, taper mode. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of show you how this works. So we'll go ahead and tighten that up. Again, I've got this clamped down so that this part back here will stay stationary. So you get that in the range that you want it. And now uh, I've got a pretty good taper on there. And when you move the cross slide back and forth, if you look real close, you see it's actually moving and it's moving at the exact taper as that bar up there and you can adjust that bar um, like you want to and then when you want to not run in taper mode you just uh, loosen this uh, 
right here. Take your clamps off down here uh, where that piece is just either going back and forth without, without catching or you can even just move it out of the way. And uh, it just works in normal mode where you're, you manually crank your cross slide at that point. And now just to show you, I've loosened the bolts up on the, the piece back there and, and in normal lathe operation mode where you're not running tapers, now when you crank the cross slide, see it just all moves together. Uh, this just slides back there and um, nothing is going on up here with the uh, actual taper attachment. And uh, your cross slide is back to where you can just crank it manually by hand just like you want or you can engage the feed and uh, let it crank in that way. So guys, I think we're about finished now with the, the cross slide, the apron, the whole um, carriage here in the middle is pretty well back together. It appears to be operating uh, like I want. Um, everything went back together without a hitch. So uh, a couple of things, if somebody has a lathe like this again, I'd be interested in seeing what goes in this little pin back here, this little hole that we showed a minute ago. Also, uh, I'm pretty sure that there was originally some type of cover back here that covered up uh, this whole, um, the, the taper attachment part that went to the back of this uh, cross slide. When I bought this machine, there was just a piece of aluminum bolted down to it. It was really tacky and ugly looking, but it kept chips and stuff out, which it functioned. I'd like to find out what was originally here and see if I can either find that part or recreate that part. Uh, but I'd like to take a look at what it looks like. I don't see it uh, actually shown anywhere in my, uh, my parts catalog or my manual. It really doesn't go down to that level of detail. So uh, anyway, if you got that, share it with me, please. Uh, but with that, uh, I think we're going to call this episode a wrap. We're getting into the short rows on finishing this up. I uh, got the crawl, I mean the uh, tail stock to do. And then down on this end, we've got to put the, the drive gears. Uh, there's a cover that goes down there for the uh, 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 feeds and speeds. And I got new belts for it. And we got to do some electrical work, wire in a drum switch. I'm going to mount it. Originally it was down here. I think I'm going to mount it up here on the top where it's a, a little more accessible. Uh, but we're getting real close to hopefully making some chips with this lathe. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll be back with this project hopefully real soon.